We're here now with Patrick Karim of North Star and Bat Charts, and we'll be talking about gold, silver, the U.S. dollar, and much more. Patrick, welcome back to the show. Pleasure to have you today. Uh, thanks, David. Thanks for having me on again there. It's a pleasure. Interesting uh, activity we've been seeing in uh, the precious metals markets. And by that, I mean, if you zoom out, which you're about to show us, you'll notice that we're in a very important phase of the multi-year cycle. So tell us what you mean by that. Well, you always, you always got to zoom out, guys, because what's happening right now, what's unfolding before our eyes is a, it's a huge paradigm shift in, um, from uh, U U.S. equities uh, b being uh, where they are today and the transition back into uh, gold, silver, commodities. And uh, you got to get some tools out, uh, some momentum tools, some rate of change tools and uh, on the monthly chart and zoom out to see exactly if you're going into an asset that's uh, cheap, like historically speaking, or it's an expensive mode. So um, I, could, I could show you a few charts there that I queued up that I think uh, are quite compelling there uh, to tell this, uh, this story. Okay. So what are we looking at right now? On the bottom chart, there's an arc. You drew this uh, yellowish arc. And we're currently right. at the um, bottom end of that arc. So are you implying then, Patrick, that if this, this uh, chart pattern were to follow the, the, uh, the arc formation, we would be trading at much higher prices into next year? Exactly. So right now, this is the historical uh, gold chart. So you've seen this, the rate of change. So seven-year rate of change, it means where, wherever you are in this chart, if you would have bought seven years ago, that's how much change, how much it went up. So 600%, 900. You see, here's the, like the bubble in the 1980s. Uh, 2011, we had a rate of change of about a three, 350%. And technical analysis, it works on any type of instruments, uh, human emotions. So here's the uh, exuberance going up. And after that, here's a, the, I could have drawn even here a perfectly broken trend line, just broke down. And then just down, um, money flowing out of gold, et cetera, starting to find a bottom. So the rate of change here was actually negative. But right now what's happening is very bullish. So we went from negative rate of change to bullish. So we went from below zero to above zero and we're gaining momentum. And right now we're coiling, slowing down on this uh, breakout line right here, trapped above an inclining arc. So higher lows, right? The arc always helps you support uh, the price action. And man, this, this is a setup. You, the last time we've seen this, it was like uh, in 2003, right here, when we started crossing above the zero line, above historical resistance, right here where I put these uh, black markers. And um, we're right above it, actually. We broke out and we're just retesting it. So if that arc holds, uh, the momentum of the price action, uh, the rate of change for gold should keep appreciating, appreciating until uh, it's unsustainable anymore and falls over. But you see here, I have a, if we do a reverse symmetry move in 2024, gold should be a, a, like over 250% uh, above what it would be uh, in 2017. Okay. Why did you use seven years as your cycle? Man, it's a, I interviewed the uh, Blackbeard Research Report a while back, and he was using seven year rate of change. And he said that, um, I forget who, well, I'm so sorry, we'll try to find the name, but the, um, Mm -hmm. It's this uh, important cycles there that some other guys have been uh, looking at. And I said, okay, I'll try it, you know, see if uh, it makes any sense. But as a TA guy, I don't put any importance to it, but it kind of, uh, it kind of fit. So I just uh, kept going using that as a baseline. Okay. All right. Now, can you apply any fundamentals as to why gold would uh, trade at 250% higher than the uh, previous seven-year uh, level? Matt? Unless I have a chart of a fundamental, so uh, unless I have a chart of uh, the inflation or the DXY, which we're going to cover later, yeah. I can't, uh, all these, all these uh, fundamentals for me, it, their narratives are dangerous even for your trading portfolio because okay. I, I've noticed in the past that, oh man, I think uh, this stock's going up for this reason. And then even if the price action went in my favor, it would like, oh yeah, I'm right, I'm right. But years later, I realized I was something else moving out, moving the price, right? Okay. So I try to stay away from any type of uh, oh, it's manipulation. It's this, it's yes. that. Uh, I understand. It's, it's, yeah, I really try to stay away from that there. But if it's something I could chart and make correlations yeah. with, like money supply, racial charts, that's, that's fine. Patrick, I have a question about your arc. Let's say we take that um, yellow highlighted area, the arc, and move it over to 1987. 
So if we align that arc to exactly, yes, what happened from 1983 to 1987, that kind of looks like the left-hand side of an arc, right? And then yes. from, and then if you look at the second arrow that you got pointing down, it looks like uh, it was ticking up, which is where kind of where we are today. But instead of going back up to 200%, it kind of just stayed flat for uh, 15 years. Uh, what's the difference between this time and that time? Man, it's the, this is like the golden egg question to be not paralyzed by analysis, right? Because you could always find something in the past. Oh, why yeah. did it? But it's, it's the weight of evidence. It's, um, uh, it's the gold to SPX ratio. It's the Fed fund rates going down. It's the DXY strength. And you've noticed, look, this black line, this was resistance right here. I've noticed that Pre uh, here was support. So previous, I call that a wall, previous support. If you break down below it, when you try to go back above it, it's resistance. And each of these times, we were not able to go back above this line. So it's, it's in the weight of evidence. There's an arc that defining the left hemisphere, fine. But until you can break out of the base, you have to add that evidence, right? That those other okay. technical analysis tools that add yes. uh, uh, probabilities of that possible move going up. And we never did. We never did. And, uh, and if you would have respected this line, as long as you didn't close above, you didn't have the signal to go long until like 2004 or five. We broke out above, retest, then you knew it was go time. Just like we're, we're doing it here, we're attacking it from above now. What is, a a reverse, what is a reverse symmetry move? Can you explain that? Yeah, reverse symmetry move, it's, um, it's a psychology of uh, all these sellers uh, just selling super fast. So here there's not a lot of buyers, right? On the way down, it's going down so fast. And all the people that, the, um, all the bag holders about higher up here, that's why you need a long time in the base for these people to get out, the tax loss seasons, whatever. They're all out. And once they're not there anymore, once the, there's an alignment for uh, price to start doing higher lows, well, there's nobody here that wants to break even. Oh, uh, honey, uh, uh, like they didn't want to tell their wife that they lost all the money. Like they've, they sold years ago. So when you go up, there's like a vacuum and you, you see these all the time. So the faster it goes down after a strong base, when you go up, it goes up pretty much the same speed that it went down. Yeah, you don't want to tell your wife you lost all your money. I, 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 I'm not married, but I can understand. All right, so uh, let's, talk about, uh, <laughs> let's talk about what that arc implies for the price. So what's interesting about that arc is that if the chart pattern were to follow the arc, um, as it did for the first half, not only can you uh, guess or estimate the price level it would be trading at, but also the timing of this climb, right? Mm -hmm. So you're looking at uh, 250 times, or 250 percent of the 2017 low. So what 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 is that in uh, in dollar terms? I think uh, that's pretty. That's close to uh, four four thousand, uh, David. Yeah, four thousand. Yeah, four thousand, four thousand two hundred. So that would be around what uh, what year would that happen? Uh, Q3, Q2, 2024. Okay, interesting. Let's switch over to silver now. Yeah. And let's apply the same analysis to silver. So what are we looking at there? Well, same thing here. So right here, uh, this is probably an area where we're going to have a congestion area where we're going to, we're going to, it could slow down. So in August of 2023, so for this one, in between 2023 and maybe like it could hit at any moment here, a little bit before, a little bit after, but let's say about that region from 2023 onwards, I have about a 350% rate of change, seven year rate of change. So let's make it a 2024 minus seven years. So in 2017, multiply the price of that uh, for a 350% move. And I think pretty much silver in 2017 was in the teens. Uh, wh why don't we talk about why you think silver and gold will trade in unison, in tandem over the next few years? It has been trading together in the past, but more recently it's sort of diverged. Do you think they'll continue to trade together going into 2024? Yeah. Look, gold and silver, they've uh, traded uh, pretty much uh, together. But when you have uh, both of them exploding off these seven years rate of change of, of these bottoms there, these, uh, these shift where the money flows are going to start uh, entering into gold and silver, we know that silver has, uh, is going to start outperforming uh, gold, right? We see with the gold-silver ratio that's top, top that 120 in March Madness and crashed down, came back up today, and now it's turning to turn over. So they're both uh, gold, gold led the way already above all time highs. 
Yeah. And the silver right now is just tracking like it always did, does in the precious metals bull era. It will track gold and surpass it. Okay. Now let's take a look at silver. So you're you're saying that uh, at are you, are you using six hundred percent growth? Three. You know, three fifty. Three fifty. Okay. Yeah. So I've done other charts where I know that there's a descending trend line above here. This is a, probably a congestion area. These ex, these these blow off tops try to discount them. So from mm -hmm. um, Q4, Q3, 2023 onwards. So maybe 2024, the same time as gold around that region. It, silver should have a rate of change of about, of about 350%. So if a seven year rate of change, so 2024, uh, 2017, gold was about uh, 16 bucks. Uh, so triple or quadruple $17. And that should be the, your target price for, um, for that region. So in 2017, it was around $17. Okay, if we multiply yeah. that by 350%, three, that's 4.5 times. Okay, so 17 times 4.5 is 76.5. So yeah. you're looking at $77 for your silver target, which is, look, uh, it's under the uh, $100 silver price call that I heard some people say. So not completely unreasonable to believe that it could go to 77000 or $77 rather in a few years. And that's by 2024, you said? Yeah. And okay. That gives you a gold silver ratio of 57 and you're still within the specs. Like I've done some charts where the gold silver ratio, there's a support line around the 40, the 40 level. So you're both, they're both going up together and they're respecting the gold silver ratio. So in your total weight of evidence, th these are um, attainable numbers, right? So, uh, when you see the big picture, when you see this arc turning around and as long as it's able to support uh, that, that momentum going upwards, um, that's the rate of change you should be expecting there. What does your technical analysis tell us about gold and silver in the short term? Uh, all right. Well, okay, I'll show you a couple of charts. So I know I've said you need 28, a close above a week, a close above 28 to really start looking at those uh, $70 targets or those higher up targets. But you could always use, here's the eight hour uh, time frame chart for silver. And you could always start looking at the smaller time frames. When they start turning around, the eight hour time frame. If uh, it breaks out, then eventually maybe the daily is going to break out. And if the daily breaks out, then the weekly. So you're trying to kind of see where the, the bottom action could carve out. And uh, this chart was done in September of 29th. And using, using the arc, I had one touch here, another one here. I had a bullish expanding descending wedge, which kind of looks bearish, but actually that's bullish where the price action goes lower and lower, but that's just uh, exhaustion selling. And after that, you could start drawing trend lines where it could break out. And uh, I did this one after just, uh, I published it on TradingView. So on TradingView, you have a fast forward button right here. I'll do it for you guys. And when you fast forward, it shows you all your, your chart annotations the way you did them, but it shows from that point on what happened to the price action. And right here, this was a good bullish omen when we broke out of this uh, descending trend line. Here, a bullish transition zone. And here, I have a longer term trend line, which brings us all the way to those 28, that nasty $28 we want to get up above. And we went up to it, uh, played around it, and it went up, retested it. I could have probably drawn this line better. There are some, like some folks told me that we actually re did a retest. And now silver is moving up level by level within the confines of the arc. So, uh, this is very bullish. As long as we keep closing above these levels identified here, $25, closing above one step at a time, and then retesting it, moving slowly to the right hemisphere of the arc, uh, we should be heading uh, close to retest those uh, $27, $28 levels there in the, by, by the end of the year. Okay. I'm, I'm just curious as to why you're applying arcs to the short term as well. Is, do, 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 do the uh, arc formations also apply for for the for shorter time horizons exactly if the, the the thing with arcs and we like we use them at north star bad charts and kevin uh, you've had the kevin uh, north star uh, charts the, the high high success rate of a, a chart is just because it, it encapsulates so well a descending trend right where nobody wants anymore here there's super like people are calling uh, here the gold chart on the daily chart people are calling golds going back to 1200 deflation but as the momentum slows down, the bottom, you see it starts flattening out. And as soon as you start hitting the right hemisphere and you start having higher lows, you have to listen to the price action telling you that, oh, something is uh, happening. Uh, the momentum is not going as down as uh, fast as you, as you want it. You're actually starting to build upwards momentum. So here's the daily chart. I have a bigger encapsulating arc. 
And within it, I had even a smaller time frame arc where the smaller the time frames, um, you have to be careful with them because they could uh, be uh, their momentum could be overridden by higher time frame uh, resistance lines, right? So at any moment, they help uh, bring the price upwards, but they can falter. And then you see here's the, the next one I did a little later. So that smaller time frame arc. Uh, went over, but actually it was the higher time frames resistance that was acting. And right now, gold is right on the precipice of testing that bigger arcs, one, two, mm -hmm. right now, that breakout line right here, and it's getting squeezed up. So as soon as we get a close above uh, this neckline right here for, for gold, uh, it should guide the price upwards for a, a target uh, to go back to all-time highs by the time of this uh, before the arc uh, completes. Okay, Patrick, let's talk about uh, finally let's, the US dollar, because that uh, is one of the variables that could put pressure on gold and silver, for that matter, yeah. if the dollar continues to be strong. So what have we got here in terms of a dollar chart? Okay, you gotta, that's why I have this chart there, just to show the weakness of the US dollar, no matter how, if it's going up on the short time frames and the milkshake theory and whatnot, you got to look at this chart. So this is, again, the seven-year rate of change. But you have to see this as when this starts breaking down, it's like the momentum of uh, even if the price action goes sideways, the momentum's broken. And once every time it's had these huge breaks, uh, the US dollar has been a, in a world of hurt. Huge break, clean, clean breakdown line. And right now, we had a breakdown line right here, 2017. It tried to get back above. And now you have one, two, three break down, try to retest, and it's the momentum is breaking down, David, for the US dollar. Here I zoomed in. It's a clear, clear topping pattern. Um, the rate of change is uh, not below zero yet. It's still positive, but it's going down mm -hmm. and down. So even if the price is still going up, you're not doing higher highs, and uh, it's a question of time. This is leading the eventual uh, um, price action breakdown of the, the US dollar. And if you put that in the whole like weight of evidence of precious metals at, at the bottom, you know, uh, historical bottoms and rate of change starting to move upwards. And then on the opposite, you have the US dollar, which is actually at the top of its uh, glory. Here, Jack, just remove even more noise. What you're seeing right here is a six year moving average of the US dollar, not the price. And here it, it matches cycles perfectly. So you always do cycle analysis uh, matching the bottoms. These are perfect the 16 year cycles 1980, 96, 2012. Every single time, it started turning back upwards. That was a bull cycle for the US dollar on the six-year moving average. Here, when it topped, when the price action was too heavy, it never, as soon as it started turning downwards, it never got back up. Here, another uh, base formation. Here's a top that turned. And it's still, it's, start, it's turning right now, uh, David, once more. So even mm -hmm. if there's a spike on the US dollar, it really, really has to start picking up steam to the upside to try to override this. And when you look about the, you use that cycle analysis to, to try to see what are the odds of this C point converting into a, an uptrend. Well, when you've seen it's done it uh, uh, two or three times previous in the past, uh, you, you have to assume that the US dollar is going to go, uh, I don't know how low it is. It could be a higher low here for the six year moving average, but you know that it's, it's going to be unwinding right now for a little while until it starts bottoming, bottoming around here, and then it's going to start turning up. Not before right. 2028. So bottom line, you think the U.S. dollar is going to weaken because momentum is slowing down. So a weakening U.S. dollar should be supportive of your earlier analysis, which is higher gold and higher silver prices going into exactly. uh, 2024. All right. Patrick, fantastic thoughts. Thank you for your analysis today. Thank you for coming on Kitco. Thank you. Thank you, David. And thank you for watching Kitco News. I'm David Lin. Stay tuned for more.